Hey everybody and welcome back. Uh, today just a quick video tutorial to have a look at how we can kind of model some curves kind of like these. This is a Zaha Hadid building but we're gonna not try and model this building exactly but look at kind of modeling these curved forms that kind of flow quite nicely and how to loft these these surfaces for different types of buildings within Revit. So the first thing we want to do is actually um, set up some reference planes. So we'll go to a site plan or any kind of floor plan actually. Then in the architecture tab, reference plane and just click and draw a couple of these. Like that. And all these are is basically the profiles that we're going to draw uh, the actual shape and then tell Revit to kind of combine those together. Um, it's really important to give these a name as well. So if I select these, I'm just going to name the 1 through to 4, 2, 3, and finally 4. Okay. And now we can head to an elevation. So I might look at this from the south elevation. So we can even just double click this to open up that elevation. And we don't actually need this. So we'll delete that. Uh, then we are going to draw uh, a an in-place mass with the profile. So we want to come to the Massing and Site tab, in-place mass, ignore that. We can give it a name or you can hit OK. And you've got two options really here, or two of the better options I find is either spline through points or spline. Um, I find spline is a little bit smoother. Um, it means you don't actually pick exactly where the line or the profile will go through, but you pick in that kind of vicinity and then you can pull those and modify them a little easier than the spline through points option. So we're going to click spline here and we want to pick one of the, we want to specify the new work plane and we're going to start by drawing on work plane one, which is the one that was uh, at the bottom of the plan. Cool, so now we're here and we're ready to draw on work plane one. Um, we've got our spline set and we're just going to start by clicking a few points. So I'm going to pick there, there, something like that. You can see it's given us a bit of an idea of where this is going, but that's it. I finished the last one on that level and once we're done, you can just hit escape to exit that. So you've got this sort of spline here. Notice when you click it, you've got these little um, handles basically here that you can drag to modify that shape. If we're not quite happy with it, we can adjust it as we like, but I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I think this is close enough. Say something like this. And then we're going to go back to the site plan, select this, and rather than draw it again on 2 and 3 and 4, I'm just going to copy this across. So I'm going to select this, come up to copy and then tick on multiple and then untick constrain and then if we pick this reference plane and drag here we've copied it once and for some reason you need to click keep unticking constrain here to paste again untick constrain again and then click up here so we've just if I hit escape I've just pasted basically one two three four uh, profiles on each of these reference planes so once we're done with that, we can probably do the rest in the 3D view, which is going to be a little bit easy to visualize. So that's all we've got at this stage. Um, at this point, you can select any one of these and adjust them if you want. So if we want it to drape down a little bit here, for example, and perhaps this one to drape up a little, we can kind of drag this, uh, maybe this one down, like that. And you can do it on any angle here, or you could also even open up so for example, now that we've selected this third one, if I just click the south elevation, I can come in here and adjust, and I know that I'm adjusting that third one because we've already selected it, so I can find you know, a kind of point that we want that to be at. Um, if we go back to 3D, again, we're going to not worry about getting it perfect in this case. It's more about explaining the tool and how you can use this in your project. So I'm going to bring this last one down all the way to make it a lot lower than the others, probably something like that, cool. So you can see there how each of those profiles are kind of slightly different. Um, once you're happy with that, and you can always modify this later, but once you're at a point that you're reasonably happy with, you can just do a window like this, select all, and come up to create form and hit solid form. 
You can see Revit just drapes uh, basically a surface across each of those profiles. Um, at this point you can still modify it, so you can select this, tab again to select any one of these profiles and you can actually oops, select any one of these points and drag them around. So I might, I'll exaggerate this, if I drag this all the way up, finish, you can see there there's a massive um, kind of lift there now in that profile. Might even just leave that for now, it doesn't really matter. Um, once you're happy with it, you can hit finish mass like that. And now we need to just apply some geometry to it. So you want to come over to the architecture tab and you're either going to need to apply a roof or a wall typically to this, um, potentially a floor also, but let's try a roof to begin with. Roof by face, select that and hit create roof. Okay, um, and Revit will sometimes, depending on the complexity of that form, it will give you that error, uh, which can't, cannot be ignored, can, can't make roof. So cancel that. In that case, you can try uh, you can try a floor or a wall. Let's try a floor for now. Floor by face, create floor. It's not going to let us select it for floor, so let's try a wall, wall by face. Make sure it's selected there, and you can choose your wall type again here. Let's try maybe generic 300, thicken it up a little. Select this, and there you go, you've got now a, a wall in there, um, which will show up in, in all your views, basically. So that's pretty much it. Now from this point you can modify it, you can still select, if we hover over here, you can see it's hovering over the mass, we can select that still, go edit in place, select, for example, this edge, or I might even select this edge and then select this point oops select the edge select the point and then drag this down like that once you're happy you can finish mass and note that while the mass is actually updated the the wall itself the geometry hasn't so what we need to do is select it select the wall and just come up here to update face and you can see there it updates it to to match that. Um, so that's pretty much it at this point. Um, again, this is like a really handy tool that you can create these non kind of forms that you wouldn't expect to be able to create in Revit pretty easily. Um, they're accurate. They're it's still your geometry. If you cut it in plan section, uh, look at it in elevation 3D, they're always they're going to show up. It's going to be coordinated across all views, which is great. Um, and it's a really handy tool to save you sometimes jumping in to something like Rhino and having to import, which um, can sometimes disjoint or disconnect your, your model a little bit in your workflow. So that's pretty much it. I hope that was helpful, guys. If so, hit that like button and subscribe to see more videos. And again, any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave those down below. Thanks again, and see you in the next video.